This has to be one of the most creative things that I've seen from Star Wars in a long time. Star Wars Visions. So Star Wars Visions is a collection of anime shorts that take place within the Star Wars universe, which to me right there is a pretty interesting concept. I always thought the world of Star Wars lended itself to anime. In a way, Star Wars Visions takes Star Wars back to its roots. Real fans know that when George Lucas was originally creating Star Wars, he took a lot of inspiration from old Japanese stories and movies, like Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress. That was one of the biggest inspirations for the first Star Wars movie. And you can totally tell when you're watching Star Wars, you're like, oh yeah, the Jedi are like the samurai. The force feels like a cool real thing. You can tell a lot of it is based off of Japanese lore and Star Wars Visions is a celebration of that, I feel. I mean, in some of these shorts you see Jedi wielding their lightsabers like swords. They put them in sheaths. The blades are actually shaped like sword blades. They're not like rounded. They're actually pointed and kind of curved like samurai swords are. It was pretty cool looking. And whether or not you want to consider this as official like Star Wars main timeline canon, it's really, I mean, it's up in the air because all these stories are unrelated to the movies that we have or the TV shows like Mandalorian or Clone Wars. They're really unrelated. They have nothing to do with anything we've seen from Star Wars so far, character-wise anyway. They're completely original stories, and that's actually one of the things I like about this, is that sure, yeah, some of these shorts involve the Empire, but the characters are completely new and original. It really shows the size and scope of this galaxy. I think it was Anthony Daniels who said that when you see each of the stars in that opening shot, you know, where the crawl's going in the movies, the idea is that each of those stars is a story. You know, this galaxy is so big, Big, there are so many planets and cultures and species and with that there are gonna be an infinite amount of stories Not just to do with the Jedi and the Empire But I mean one of these Star Wars vision shorts is about a band Yeah, like a musical group and that's one thing that's always intrigued me about Star Wars I mean besides the Jedi yeah, the Jedi are cool and all but I mean what about everyone else in the galaxy? You know like the civilians what's their day-to-day -day life like or how about the music? What does the music sound like in a galaxy far far away? What are the bands like what are the singers and I guess the drummers and guitarists I guess it's not too different from our world, which did kind of bum me out in that short. I was like, oh, well, music sounds not too different from our own. So I guess maybe this galaxy isn't too far, far away because they just play rock music. They have drummers and guitarists and a bassist. Sure, the instruments look a little different, but the music sounds like a plain, you know, 90s punk rock song. It's a nitpick, but you know, the music in Return of the Jedi, Jabba's Palace, he had that song, de -de 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 -de. it sounded more Star Wars-ish than the music in this short did. Again, that's a nitpick, but I'm just saying. The point is, I like seeing how the other half lives in the Star Wars universe, not just the Jedi versus the Sith, but everyday civilian life. This short showed me that. That was pretty cool. Granted, Boba Fett was in that short, so there is that. I'll say this though, the fact that they brought Tamura Morrison back to voice him is awesome. I just love Tamura Morrison. The guy's great, and Book of Boba Fett's gonna be badass. Where's our trailer? But speaking of the voice actors though, they actually got quite a few recognizable names to come in and do the English voice acting. And yeah, with these, I watched the English dub. I haven't watched them in Japanese yet. I want to though. But I mean, you have Neil Patrick Harris doing a voice for one of them, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Allison Brie, George Takai is in one of them, yeah. George Takai, longtime Star Trek icon, finally came over to Star Wars. Oh my. Wonder how Trekkies are gonna take that. Some of these voices are really hard to recognize though. Like, I know NPH's voice, because I have watched How I Met Your Mother all the way through countless times. But watching the short that he's in, I was like, Wait a minute, that was Neil Patrick Harris? This sounded nothing like him. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's just how it was. One interesting thing you'll find about these shorts is when they take place within the timeline. I mean, for some, it's kind of hard to figure out. You're like, oh, does this take place in the prequel era or the Imperial era or the sequel era even? Some of them I found they take place like way after the sequel era, to which I was like, whoa, okay, what? What is this? Completely uncharted territory, okay. It was an interesting story, but I was just not expecting it. For some of these shorts that take place after the sequels, I'm kind of curious to see if there's ever gonna be any continuation of them. I mean, part of me kind of doubts it, but they were interesting stories and they do kind of leave it open. I'm not gonna spoil how, but it was interesting. It's like, okay, now we have Star Wars lore that takes place way before the prequels with those High Republic books. So I guess we can have lore that takes place way after the sequels also with Star Wars Visions, which I am completely fine with because again, Star Wars is such a vast galaxy full of so many stories. The timeline can be so vast that it can span hundreds of thousands of years if it wants to, I guess. Cause let's take the movie trilogies, right? The Skywalker Saga, the prequels, the originals, the sequels. The Skywalker Saga spans about 75 years, give or take. I just did the math in my head. Considering how long a timeline can be, yeah, let's tell stories from before that or after that. 
I'm interested. Because really, that gives us so much room to tell new, fresh, original stories. And that's what I feel Star Wars Visions does for us. And as long as we're telling new original stories with new original characters, why not tell these stories in a new original way for Star Wars? Let's make them anime shorts. All right, cool. And one of the coolest things about these shorts is that each one is done in a different art style because they were actually each done by different art studios. The first one is like this black and white kind of Western-ish style. Then you have one that looks like the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Some have more attention to detail when it comes to light and shadow than others do. It was cool, it gave each story its own unique atmosphere and tone. Of course, this being Star Wars though, there will be some Easter eggs where I'm like, really? A couple of lines here or there that throw back to lines from the original trilogy where I'm like, okay, that seemed kind of shoehorned. Like you had to shoehorn that line into this short because it was in the original trilogy. A couple instances like that happened throughout these shorts, but again, that's a nitpick. It's not like they ruined the entire thing for me. It's just something I noticed. So in the end, Star Wars Visions is a really interesting take on the world world of Star Wars. I like the art style of everything. I like the stories. They're really unique. They're not always about Jedi. I mean, yeah, Jedi are in quite a few of them, but the way they're executed and shown is in such a different way than we've seen in Star Wars ever before. Like, ever. I know that's saying a lot, but just watch these and I'll be proven right. This is something at least I've never seen in Star Wars before. Taking it back to its inspirational roots. Like, I feel like George Lucas would like watching these. Just the whole execution of everything. I just, I really dig it. If you were to watch all nine of these shorts back to back, I'd say it lines up to about three hours hours, give or take? I could be completely wrong on that. I was just winging it. But it'll be three hours well spent. So, Star Wars Visions. Have you seen these visions yet? What do you think of them? Which one is your favorite? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.